Welcome back to the Nori Podcast, hosted by me, Daniel C. Lewis. Love doing this each and every week um, for you. Um, please like, share, and subscribe. If you have some groups, please like, share, and subscribe. Put this podcast in your groups so that other notaries can benefit from the information we're about to share. And this week, like I said last week, we're going to have a very special guest. When I started uh, thinking about doing this podcast uh, several months ago, <clears throat> one of the things that <clears throat> I did was I wanted to have special guests, very exceptional people on the podcast. And when I was writing down who would I want to have on this podcast, this person was like at the top of the list. So I am so happy to have this person, uh, Marcy. Hopefully, I'm pronouncing your last name right. Tiberio. Tiberio. Perfect. Tiberio. Daniel, thank yes. you so much for having me. And I, that was such a nice intro. I'm not sure that that's necessarily true, but I am in yes. good company with all the individuals who have been on here in the past, and I'm so happy to be here. Thank you for inviting me. Oh yes, I know. Thank you, because I know you're a busy person. Let me just tell you a little bit. I I don't normally do this, but let me just tell you a little bit about Marcy. She was like to be successful because I always get questions. How can you be successful in the long term in the notary industry? Uh, I think one of the reasons the, the way to be successful is you have to know the business inside and out. Um, for example, Marcy was a settlement agent. She started out as a settlement agent. She actually built uh, the settlement agent for the company that she's working for from the ground up. She worked in all phases of the settlement uh, process, including title, clearing title, uh, scheduling closings, HUD preparation, signing loan documents with actual uh, and actual disbursements. She was a closing coordinator. She and she is also the founder of the New York Notary Alliance. She's been a notary uh, for several years, and I'm just so happy. She knows the notary industry. Backward and forth, she's an NNA ambassador. She um, she has spoken. She has been a speaker uh, for several years for the National Notary Association at the conference. So I am so excited to have her here today. And I wanted to ask her so many so many questions. I got to ask her, mm -hmm. <clears throat> and even before we even got started, uh, there's so many different areas. So she because she has so much knowledge of what is. So, like to be a successful notary entrepreneur. Uh, I'm just going to ask her some questions, some, just some background questions, and ask her about the New York Notary Alliance. Um, so hopefully that's okay, Marcy. Absolutely. Ask away. Uh, well, can you tell us <clears throat> about your journey? Because I know, <clears throat> for example, your educational background was more in, was it psychology? So uh, I went to college, started for psychology, and at that time, I was also kind of a restaurant manager, and honestly, it's so strange, but mm -hmm. I went through and uh, for personal reasons, had to come home from college and went and started my career actually in the food service industry. Um, and then, like most people, life happens again, and my grandparents became ill, so I needed to find a different profession where I wasn't working all those crazy hours. So I went back to school to get my paralegal degree and uh, came out of college. And as you know, everybody wants experience. And I was just very fortunate to get hired by a title company as a receptionist uh, and worked my way through that title company. They were a national title company to become an assistant vice president. Um, and then I eventually left there to help another title company start their own settlement division. And then a uh, previous client of mine who was a mo national mortgage banker said, we need someone to come run our closing department, sell loans in the secondary market. Can you come do that? And I was like, sure. Uh, and then I realized, you know, things start to happen and maybe the workplace became a little toxic. And I thought, well, maybe it's time to move on to something else. And so I quit thinking, well, I'll find another job somewhere in this industry. Been doing mortgages for years and years and years. And previous customers came out and said, well, while you're looking for something else to do, do you want to do our loan findings for us in your area? And I was like, sure. Like, why not? Uh, and professional notary services was born at that point. I just fell in love with 
meeting new people and talking to people and being on the road and not being behind a desk all day. There's something very empowering and freeing about that, right? So my entrepreneur journey started a little differently in that I really fell into it. It was never intentional. It was completely unintentional. Wow. You know, we have so much in common because years ago in another life, I was, uh, I became, uh, I worked in the food industry, shift manager, assistant manager, general manager, and that experience really helped me with this experience. And then I became a loan officer, senior loan officer, mortgage broker, and understand the industry that way. That, wow, that we have so much in common. I didn't, I didn't realize that uh, mm -hmm. before. That's, that's awesome. Uh, what, what inspired you to create an organization dedicated to supporting notaries in, in New York? So I think um, that's a good question. And it's a little hard to answer because I don't know that there was like a key moment in time. I think what I realized is some uh, some government entity, secretaries of state out there are very involved in their notary community. Um, New York has never been that way. I remember, you know, emailing them or calling them to ask them questions. And they would say, well, check the notary manual. And I'd say, well, if it were in the notary manual, I wouldn't be calling you. Uh, and yeah. they would be like, well, call an attorney. We, we can't help you. And I thought to myself, well, that's difficult, right? Like maybe I have the resources to hire an attorney or go someplace else, but not every notary does. And all this time I'd been sending out to go to, you know, can you clean up the this notary that did this wrong? Or did you hear about this? And I thought to myself, it's easy to blame them for maybe not knowing their notary law and they should know their notary law. But when you don't have the support behind you, it's so difficult sometimes to do that. Right. So I think for us, it was a matter of how can I help the notary community here? How can I help get them good information? Um, how can I alleviate some of these things that we're hearing and seeing because they don't have the proper tools? And that's really kind of how Nina came about. They're very, very good. Yeah, because I formed here in Indiana years ago, the Indiana Notary Association, and I had quite a bit of challenges that I didn't see uh, coming. So let me ask you this. How did you approach setting up the New York Notary Alliance, and what were your initial goals with, with that? So I talked to my attorney and my accountant, and they were like, what are you going to do? <clears throat> <laughs> I was like, what's up, yeah. Notary Alliance? Um, and we actually went a little differently here. We didn't start it as a not-for-profit because I really wasn't sure that anyone would be interested. Like, I really didn't know how this was going to come about. So we said, well, we'll just start it up as like a little old LLC. And then down yeah. the road, if we feel like it's going to convert, we'll, we'll do that. So we set it up. We did a small membership. It's like, we have two levels, I think. One's $25, one's $50 a year, right? It's not. Wow. Expensive. The money just goes to keep the lights on, right? It like pays for the website and the hosting and the MailChimp and all of the things. Um, and our goal really was initially just to provide education or content for notaries, right? A monthly newsletter, a Facebook group, a safe place where they could ask questions if they had them. And if I didn't have the answers, I would try to find them for them. Um, and we've kind of expanded really into the advocacy piece as well with like the legislator. We've kind of taken that and said, okay, education is important. And now that we see how important that is, it's even more important to try to get the laws in New York State to match our mission here with notaries, right? And I think that's, you know, that's what I uh, really kind of modeled it. You know, I've known you for a long time. I'm a huge fan of your notary association. I promote you everywhere people love what you've done for them in Indiana. And I wanted to be, wanted to be you in that space, right? I wanted to be a valuable resource for other people. And I wanted to develop a relationship, hopefully with the state that would allow me to do that. Nice. Nice. Can you share any memorable moments or milestones that stand out to you building the Alliance? Yes. Yeah, so we, uh, so remote online notarization laws passed here uh, about two years ago. And, you know, here they open it up for public comment and you can submit any information that you want. And we submitted a ton of information. Mm -hmm. um, and then when the final law was passed, they put it out there and they put a little blurb and they thank everyone who contributed, you know, to this piece of legislation. And right there in the middle said the New York Notary Alliance. And I was like, 
Right. I mean, it sounds silly and I know it sounds silly even saying it out loud, but to have that sort of verification yes. that what we said was taken into consideration. Now, not everything we said was ultimately put in that final legislation, although a lot of it was. Um, yeah. And we thought to ourselves, OK, this is this is our coming moment. Right. This is where we now see, OK, there are people out there who do appreciate what we're doing, who do think we offer value. And for me, that was sort of the tipping point. OK, I'm on the right track here. And that, I think, was the validation we needed. That's so satisfying. I know when we pass laws here, we help pass laws. That's so satisfying because, yeah, yeah, it's like you're making say. history. Mm -hmm. Yes. What What do you think are the biggest challenges that New York notaries face today? Um, I don't think it's just New York necessarily. I think notaries in all the states are facing probably the same challenges that we are, right? We, we're talking, we're hearing more and more about fraud, deed fraud, you know, the criminals out there. I think notaries have to be so much more diligent, elder fraud, right? I think we need to really be uh, more the eyes and ears than we used to be maybe in the past. I think it's so critical that notaries know their state laws. And like we talked about, some states just aren't great about providing mm -hmm. that information. And Sometimes the law is great, right? Making those decisions. So I think notaries across the country are really facing this tipping point moment of we need to be careful about practicing law, but we also need to remember, right, we're, we're public servants, right? We're here to protect the public. We are the first line um, of defense for fraud. And that is so critical. So I think that that's really probably the number one thing we need to be cautious about there is how are we helping the community in that respect? How do you see the role of notaries evolving in the next few years, especially with the rise of a remote online notarization? So that's a good question. And I'm going to say that my what I thought before New York had remote online maybe has changed a little bit now. Mm -hmm. I think that there's always going to be a place for in-person. I really don't ever see that not being the case. Um, maybe it'll be less so as the generations below come up with that whole, you know, they love doing everything online, but I still think there'll always be a place for in-person, certainly. I do think remote will change a little bit of how maybe the mortgage industry works and in that, you know, title companies or lenders, that you know, they'll start to use more in-house notaries per se, maybe uh, in that remote space. It makes more sense for them. There's better control, right? They can operate more, but I don't see that being a huge uh, bump in the road, except for a few years down. Yeah. I think, I think what notaries need to remember is the, you know, the world turns based on notarizations, right? So like I always say during COVID, I think like 47 states had emergency orders revolving around COVID. That, yeah. that's, I mean, wrong on notarization during COVID, that's, that's significant. How many other things did you hear about in that way? You know, we're needed yeah. for so many things. So I think I think we'll change a little in the respect of I do think that you know, states will get better about maybe um, how they approve their notaries. Better legislation, I think, will come around. Remote will certainly always have its place, but I don't think uh, I don't think that's going to take away from in person altogether. I just can't see that in my lifetime. It doesn't mean after I'm long gone that it won't change, but I think yeah. we'll always have a need for in-person. Yeah. What, what advice would you give to new notaries looking to build a, or a sustainable notary business? So that's an excellent question because, again, before I would have said to you, it's really hard to get like in the loan signing business right now. The notary industry is, you know, oversaturated. And yeah. now I feel like saying to you, there are a lot of notaries out there, but not oh, all notaries are created equal, right? Good notaries are not always easy to find. And that's what you want to be. You want to be a good notary. So the first most important thing is knowing your notary laws. Everything else is based on that, right? Loan signings, all of that. Keep in mind, great customer service. Um, and this all comes from a business mindset, mm -hmm. right? So being a manager for years in fast food, customer service, right? And then in the title company and the lender. The most important thing is to remember you are a business owner, whether you do it full-time or part-time. So having a professional email, right? Not crazy cat lady at one, two, three, 
you know, Yahoo. And mm -hmm. sending professional business emails where there are no, you know, texting abbreviations, purple font, all capital letters, right? Run on yeah. sentences. Um, when you answer the phone, it's a professional manner. Hi, you've reached, yes. you know, Marcy at Professional Notary Services that you return phone calls and emails. I think, I think that that's really important is to operate from a place of being a business owner. Um, I'll see a lot online. They'll say, well, I don't know what to charge. What do I charge? Well, you don't see other companies asking that online because, <laughs> yes. right? I'm just saying they they base they base that information on their own personal information. So my answer always is, I can't tell you what to charge. I don't know your expenses or your time or any of those things. And I don't know what you want your profit margin to be. That is research you need to do on your own. You need to figure it all out, right? And if you're not making enough money, can you reduce your expenses further? Can you build your clientele a different way? So for me, existing in the notary space is really more about basic notary law. Do you know your law? And then do you operate from a business mindset or do you operate from a side hustle? I got to make some extra cash sort of mindset, because in my mind, those are two different things. Now, you you mentioned something, and this is this comes up all the time in my in-person meetups and also in my online meetups, a good notary. And a lot of people consider themselves, oh, I'm a great notary. What do you consider, because you have a signing service, what, what would be the qualifications to you as a good notary? So first, like I said, knowing your notary law, right? That's so important. I shouldn't be the one to tell you what your state allows or doesn't allow. You, you should know that off the top of your head. Uh, good customer service, right? Being pleasant, polite, kind to me, to my customer, to the people that you're out there meeting is so important. Dressing professionally, being on time, uh, again, treating it like it's a true business. I have lots of notaries who I don't talk to hardly ever, like maybe once a few months, but they do tons of closings for me. And the mm -hmm. reason is because they do a great job. Like we don't have to have, I don't have to call them and be like, hey, you missed a signature or you didn't double check, right? They were, they're very independent. They do all the right things. Mm -hmm. No one ever complains about them. I get nothing but rave reviews. I would also say too, in, in that space with the customer service piece is, I think it's pride in what you do, right? And confidence in what you do. Those things show through when yeah. you're at a signing or a notary appointment. And again, like I say, coming from a place of being a public servant, um, I've always been that person who said, you know, I don't chase money. My success does not come from that. I try to really do the right thing for the people who have hired me. And sometimes, that means making a little less money. And sometimes I make a lot more, right? But it's always from a place of, is this the right thing to do? And I really try to emulate that. And the notaries who work for me, who I would say are, you know, my A notaries, cream of the crop, they feel the same way. Like we truly love what we, what we do. Yeah. We are out there every day. And granted, there are times where you're like, oh, this is the worst appointment ever. And it's two hours. And you're like, I just want to go. Like, do we have to read every single page? Listen, I'm there. I hear you. I've been there too. Um, but ultimately, like, they stick it out. They do the right thing. And everyone is so happy afterwards. So for me, that's what being a good notary is, right? You come from a place of doing the right thing. Um, and yeah. you know who the expectations are, right? And you, you raise that bar for other notaries. You should be the one out there that other notaries look to and go, yeah, this notary in my area, people love her. They say great things about her. And that's what you want to be. You want to be that notary. How, how important is community and networking for notaries? And how does the Alliance foster these connections? Yeah, so I think really that's um, a funny thing. You know, we're, we'll be at conference here in June for the NNA. And when people ask me why I went to conference or why I go every year, the first thing I say is, like all of my notary friends, right? I would have never met you had we never met at conference. Uh, some of my best notary friends are people from all across the country that I would have never met or known had I not gone to conference. And the best thing about it is hearing about their experiences, being able to have a community where I go to and say, you know, I had this, this experience or this happened to me. And like, what do you think? How would you have handled it? 
did I did I do the right thing here? Um, sometimes being a notary entrepreneur, you are out on an island, right? You're sort of by yourself yeah. being self-employed. And this is for any self-employment business, really. It's hard to find people. It's, I'll go home and tell my family and they'll be like, okay, but they don't really 100% understand what it is that I'm saying. So having yeah. other individuals that you can have that that relationship with is critical in your success and in their success, right? You need that support. So I'm a huge advocate of networking community. I don't look at other notaries as competition. I do perfectly fine with what I have going on here. I think, you know, you're only as strong as your weakest link. If yeah. we all do the right thing and the best thing, then we just strengthen that community. Um, Nina is what I hope we're working toward is that we we provide a safe space for notaries to ask questions and not feel like, well, you know what, I feel stupid or I want to post anonymously because I don't want anyone to know I'm asking. Um, I, I don't want anyone ever to feel that way. I want to be an open resource. And what I love about our, you know, our Facebook group is that other notaries are so giving of their information. They're so engaging. That's what I want to see for everybody across the country and every community. I want to see that give and take. I want to see that support. I want us to all celebrate our successes. What do you think your future goals for the, the New York Notary Alliances are? What, what's your future goals? So we're really working toward that ad advocacy piece with legislation. Uh, we kicked off a little campaign last year to talk about raising the notary fee in New York. Uh, it did not pass, unfortunately, but we were very successful in understanding now uh, the better ins and outs of legislation here in New York. There's certainly a learning, learning curve there. Um, and we made some good friends along the way. So we're eager, eager to get that back out uh, there soon. We've been approached by some attorneys who have some pending legislation. Uh, when Ron was passed, RIN, Remote Ink Notarization, was, was sunsetted. We'd love mm -hmm. to see that come back here. Uh, we have some attorneys and some legislators who are very interested in that legislation. So I think in the upcoming year, we're really going to spend some time in those types of uh, advocacy situations. Of course, we want to continue on with our education piece. We're looking yeah. to maybe do a conference next year and, you know, adding more content to the space. But really, advocacy and education is where we're going to continue on going forward. Uh, what, how, how do you envision the alliance impact on a notary profession in, as a whole, both in New York and beyond? I hope that we that provide value to the people who are out there. I hope that we um, I hope that we set the bar for notaries who don't really know where to get the information from. I always tell them there's you know the big three, right? The NNA, the ASN, the AAN, the big national associations. But lots of states have their associations as well. And mm -hmm. going to those associations is a more intimate, right, camaraderie toward of experience. Those are the places too that you want to join. You want to get that state specific information. You want those people uh, to become, like I said, colleagues of yours, right? You want to have individuals so you can network and communitize. So I hope that that NINA becomes that for notaries in New York. But I hope other individuals maybe who are in states who don't have a state association, think to themselves, well, I don't know if Marcy can do it. I can do it too. Because that is 100% the truth. If I can do it, you can do it, right? So that's what I hope for. I hope people see the value in a state association. And if you don't have one, that you consider getting together and doing one. Having a state association for me was, the, the, looking back at that, I'm, I was thinking, how in the heck did I do that? Because it's so many pieces that you have to, especially if you're fighting for legislation, um, meeting with representatives, meeting with senators, meeting with your local uh, mayor in your town. I had met, met with my local mayor, going to committee meetings, all that. That's a full time job. Plus, you still got to run your notary business. And I know, I laugh. Have, it's so true. I, yes. The amount of time I spent on Nina last year was so overwhelming to every other thing that I have going yes. on. And I was laughing. I'm like, this year, I can't spend that amount of time. Like, And then everything sort of turned around. So I'm in agreement with you. I don't think people realize yes. the amount of time and effort that goes yes. into it. Like I said, it's a labor of love for me. I'm really fortunate that professional notary services supports me but yes. it also supports 
Nina, right? I mean, we don't make enough money to do all the things that we want to. So all of that comes out of pocket for me. And yes. frankly, that's right. I don't, that's okay. I find the importance of it to be um, well worthwhile for that. But yes, you are right. It can take over and consume your entire yes. day if you let it. It is very involved. Yeah, I don't think people really understand. I re I just thinking about this and thinking about you forming the association, the alliance that you have. I remember just putting together, when I first started my association, putting together a bowling party and inviting it. I had to pocket that, come out of my own pocket yeah. to get people to, the, the joy. It was, it was just, yeah, it's just a, those little things like that. What, so based upon that, what legacy do you hope to leave within the notary community through your work with the alliance? I hope people just, I hope someone down the road says, you know what, I really found value in what Marcy did, right? I uh, I got something from it. I walked away with new information that I didn't have or better marketing for my business, or I became a better notary because of the information that she, you know, gave us. I just hope that I make some sort of small impact on the notaries out there I'm not really looking for appreciation or gratitude or any of those things. I just hope that I'm able to raise the notary community here in New York a, a little bit higher. And I also hope, truthfully, that people who haven't considered becoming a notary might look at that as, hey, this is a great occupation or a career. I would love to do that, right? The people who are notaries who maybe aren't using it, hey, maybe I'll go out there and do something more with it. And then the ones who are this is just the support I was looking for. So if anyone down the road after I'm long dead walks by my grave, I hope they'd be like, hey, that's Marcy from Nina. I yeah. really love the marketing list she put in there. Or, right, it sounds so silly and that's so morbid. But that's what I hope for. I just hope that someone out there got something from what I've been trying to do over here. Wow. Very powerful. Is there any final advice or insights you'd like to share with notaries listening to this today? I I just think out do the right thing, right? Like we all we all have days and moments. I know it's not the easiest of professions. I know there's a lot of background noise, right? Sign and stamp, make six figures, all of these kinds of things. Um, everyone trying to get you to buy their book, their course, their class. Yeah. I think you just need to stay the course. And if you're new and you're feeling discouraged or frustrated, I would just encourage you to maintain right doing all the right things maybe won't hit today or tomorrow but when they do you will find yourself on an amazing path um i love every minute of what i do as a signing agent that in meeting people and helping other notaries and talking i am grateful for all of the things that happened that got me to this place i would hate for someone to give up too quickly um because you know, it hasn't happened right away. Please don't. And I'm certainly, my door is always open. You're always welcome to give me a call or an email or text. I'm more than happy to talk to you. Even if you're not in New York, I'm happy to lend a support or guidance, or I want to be a resource for notaries everywhere. I also want to thank Daniel so much for having <laughs> this podcast, because it's so critical to get good information from good sources, right? It's a topic of conversation we have a lot. Daniel is an excellent resource for not only notaries in Indiana, but notaries everywhere. And hopefully, you know, this podcast, again, will further the notary industry and bring us all a little bit higher on there. So thank you so much for having me. And thank you so much for doing this. Oh, no, thank you. I know your time is so valuable. And for those notaries out there, both me and Marcy, I think I can say this now, we will be at the National Notary Association hosting a podcast, live podcast. And you can sit down and ask us questions on how to build your business. This is going to be a great podcast uh, at the National Notary Association. I think it's going to be in Las Vegas this year. So Vegas. Yes. You all have to come to Vegas. You all have to come to Vegas and watch us live. It's going to be great. Marcy, we are definitely going to have you back. There's so many other topics that I would just like to pick your brain on. Uh, you're so knowledgeable and you're just a credit to the notary community, uh, the New York notaries. I hope they appreciate 
everything that you do. You're just a credit. You're just a credit to humanity. I think. Thank you so much, Marcia. Thank for you coming. so much. That was so kind and generous. And maybe a little over the top, but no, no, not at all. If you like this podcast, make sure you like, share, and subscribe. Mm -hmm. Uh, we're going to have another uh, podcast. We're going to definitely have Marcy come back because she is so knowledgeable. We're definitely going to have her come back. Hope to see you next week. Everybody have a great day. Have a good day.